Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to learn about recursive common table expressions. So we're going to learn all about recursive CTEs, common problems you can solve using recursive CTEs, and some limitations with some of the statements that go into recursive CTEs. So recursive CTEs are CTEs that query themselves. They're useful for solving problems involving hierarchies, which are trees, where once you have identified the parents, you need to query for the children. For example, we can use recursive CTEs to solve queries involving org charts or build materials. So here's an example of a tree of an, of an org chart. And then here's another tree that's representing a build material for sunglasses. So both are examples of tree structures that you might see in business. A recursive CTE is a common table expression that references itself. In doing so, the initial common table expression is repeatedly executed, returning subsets of data until the complete result is returned. So if you're not familiar with the recursion, check out the download I've provided, and it'll give you additional insight into this concept. So let's look at how we set up a recursion CTE in SQL. So I'm going to start out with just a general layout and then we'll get into a, a demo uh, later on in this lesson. So the general layout of a recursive CTE starts out like any other common table expression with a with statement. So here you can see we have with CTE and then the columns. And then it ends like any other common table expression where you actually select from the CTE. So you can see here we're selecting from the CTE. Now the inside is just a query that will re generate a result set that then is exposed, right? So we have a common table expression that's going to expose columns. There's a result set that's coming out of the common table expression. We then select from that common table expression. So the magic that occurs is what happens on the inside. Because what you're going to see that's in, on happening on the inside is that this common table expression actually calls itself. You see here we have an anchor member and a recursive member. So let's talk more about those. The key difference between the common table expression recursive versus non-recursive is a recursive common table expression has what's called an anchor member and a recursive member. The anchor member initiates the query. It contains what's called the base query. So it's going to set up the initial results that the common table expression contains. You could think of it as maybe traditionally what the result set that a, any common table expression would have in it, right? So when we normally would call a common table expression, it has a set of rows in it. Think of the anchor member as being that set of rows, okay? So you can think of the anchor member as being the top of the tree. It's going to be those initial results that we use to drive down into our hierarchy. Now the recursive member references the CT. Now this is what is different about a recursive common table expression versus a non-recursive. So a recursive CT is going to query the next level down in a sense when it comes to the hierarchy. And it also knows when to terminate the query because if it doesn't have a terminating condition on it, it'll just keep rolling down through the structure and it could go on infinitely and what's called an infinite loop and it'll just never stop. And then the server runs out of memory or it has its own terminating condition and you will receive an error on your end that says your query didn't run. So you can think of the recursive member as going from the parents of the hierarchy to its children, right? So we're going from one level to the next level down. So here's an example of a real simple recursive common table expression that is counting from 1 to 50. So let's go through this and all the pieces. So the first piece that we want to talk about is the invocation. So this is the statement that uses the common table expression. And in our case, this one is in green and it's real simple. What we're doing here is we're selecting n from CTE count. 
Okay, so what we're going to ha have happen here is we're going to get back the numbers 1 through 50. The next piece I want to talk about is the anchor member, which is inside our common table expression. Again, our common table expression, CT count, is what's inside these parentheses. And our anchor member literally just is going to return back the number n. So if we just had CTE count as a, a select statement that returned just the value 1, then when we did a select n from CTE count, we would just get back a 1. It would come up 1. But that's kind of boring, right? We're doing a count. So the really cool part about the recursive CTE is that it has a recursive member, and that's what is shown in yellow. And the recursive member is that portion of the query that will repeatedly execute until no rows are returned. And so the results of, of each execution will be uh, union with the prior results at the end of the execution of the entire query. And that will occur after the termination um, check. So how this works is, is our recursive member will essentially select n plus 1 it's, so essentially it's getting n because it's count it's getting itself so it basically selects from the CTE and since the anchor member was 1 it gets 1 back and so it's going to select n plus 1 which is now 2 from CTE count right and so now it, it basically it's going to go well it's 2 less than 50 and it is so then it it calls itself again right is 2 less than 50 yeah so n plus 3 3 less than 50 and so on so this is kind of looping through and generating a, um, a result of n until we get to where n is greater than 50 and at that point this select stops we hit our termination check and we now have a whole bunch of results in our case each result set is a one row result set and then we union them all together okay so there's going to be 50 of these little sets inside this this run we just did and what we get back is a single result now of rows and the rows will be um, in order 1 through 50. so let me show you this in terms of a full chart so how this would work in terms of recursive full chart is is that we start our query and then we query our anchor member and remember the anchor member is executed only once so in this case this is where we were calling you know n equals one and then we query the recursive member and the recursive member in our case is where we're essentially adding one to n right so we execute this until the termination check is false so we're going to come down and we're going to go hey it's n less than 50 and as we, we continue through we're going to go is, is it is the termination check okay or not so we, we're good so we keep rolling through we add to our query and we we move through when we have a bad termination check we do our union of all our results and then we turn the results set so let's go check this out in the demo so I'm going to write up that recursive common table expression to count the 50. So here's our anchor member. And then we'll union that with our recursion, our recursive member. So we'll add one to this. And then the magic here is we reference our common table expression. And of course, we got to make it stop, right? So we'll say less than 50. And end it. So now I need to invoke it, right? So I'll select from our, from our CTE. Now let's run it and see what happens. As you can see, I get n 1 through 50. So one thing that we might want to do 
is count by twos. So how can we do that? So maybe we can start with zero and then we count by two to 50. And I think I our result will be zero, two, four, six, eight, up to 50. Let's try this. So I went zero through 50. I could do the same thing if I wanted to start at two. So my initiator anchor is that's going to start at two now. So now instead of zero, it should start at two. And there we go. And if I want, I can count by four starting at two. So it should go two and then in six, right? See how that worked. So there's a lot of cool things you can do with the counting. One thing I want to show you is what happens if your terminator's not right. So let's try doing our recursion with a terminator that is incorrect. So I'm going to just send this back and say where n is greater than zero. So when I run this, n's always going to be greater than zero. And what do you think is going to happen? It kept running and running and running, right? Because that was always true. Because n's always greater than zero. And so it never, it never failed. You know, it never came back with a false, right? So it never terminated. And if you recall from our full chart, it's only when the termination is false that it all. Um, exit out. So in this case, we get a statement that says the statement terminated, maximum recursion has been exhausted before statement completion. So what this is saying in English is that it can only run a hundred queries inside our recursive CTE before it gives up. So you may have an would you may have a legitimate reason as to why you'd want to go more than a hundred. Um, perhaps you have a very deep tree. So let's pretend like we wanted to count to 200. So um, as you recall, we had our statement like this to count to 50. So let's pretend like we wanted to count to 200. When I run this, so I can't count to 200 because my maximum recursion got hit. Well, one thing I can do to get around this is to put a query hint on to set my max recursion to another number. And I do this on my invocation. So on my from, on, on the outside of my from, I can say option. And I can say max. So I, I might say here, I know that I'm going to have counts that are going to go up past 200. So I could put my max recursion to 250. And then when I run this, I'm now able to get my counts up to 200. Just be aware of using the option. This is not fix bad queries. Just, just this allows you to go deeper into your tree. If your query is bad, your query is bad. You need to fix it. Just use option to allow you to expand the search that your query is, is performing, not to overcome a, a poor query. Hopefully now you understand the mechanics of how a recursive query works. So I would recommend working with the basic query to really understand the fundamentals of how the recursive CT works. And then from there you can branch out because we will be working with more complex uh, recursive common table expressions in the next lesson, specifically with bill of material. And it's going to be really uh, important that you understand the fundamentals before going into that. So before we wrap up, let's talk about some uh, recursive common table expression guidelines. The first is, is that you need to have at least one anchor and recursive member. 
The second is, is that the fields and data types between the members must be the same. I think that makes sense because you're we're dealing with a union, right? And remember in unions, the fields and data types need to be the same. And the from clause can only refer to the CTE once. That makes sense. And there's some clauses that are not allowed in the recursive definition. So you can't have a group by or a having inside a recursive definition or left right or full outer joint but you can have an inner joint okay also no scalar aggregation like sums and averages and such and select distinct is not allowed which means for instance that you can't get away with some maybe sloppy sql right because a lot of times if we have sqls that not working the quite right way we'll put a select distinct on it to get rid of some duplicate rows so you can't do that anymore so you're gonna to have to write some tight code just to make sure that you're getting the um, no duplicates um, no subqueries and tops not allowed in this lesson we learned about the main parts of the recursive comma table expression the general syntax that's allowed and some of those clauses that aren't allowed within the body of the definition. And again, if you have any doubts over how a recursive CT works, I would go back and, and look at the flow chart, the different parts of a recursive um, CTE, and then the handout that I'm providing. And also um, ask questions in the class discussion and we can help you out. So have a great day. Oh, forgot. One last thing before you have a great day. Take the challenge at the bottom of this lesson and reinforce everything that you learned. And then after you did that, you can have a great day. But you can have a great day taking the challenge too. It's all fun. So anyways, enjoy yourself and I'll see you in the next lesson.